Are we doing good? Good, 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 good. Oh, man, we are wrapping up our series called Make Wise Choices. Um, and here's the thing. Um, if you guys haven't been here all week or I don't know what your week has been like, but man, uh, the last couple weeks has been awesome. Um, how many guys were here? A few last week? Last week, last week, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had an all life group night because for me, um, I got to teach inside of our church um, to all of your parents. And so uh, that was awesome. And I talked to them about S E. X. Bam! And so I don't know if you were there, but it was so much fun. Um, and so here's what I want to I just want to invite you. Maybe you don't have a home church. Maybe your parents don't go to church. Look, here's what I want. Man, we have a ton of stuff going on in the life of our church, and I just want to invite you to be a part of it. I'm going to ask you that, man, if your parents don't go to church, man, don't you have fun when you get here, right? Right? And so, man, I would highly suggest, man, maybe, maybe on a Sunday, um, you want to ask your parents to come. Either way, man, I would love to just invite you to be part of our community because, man, our church lets me preach, and when that happens, we have a crazy, crazy time. So, uh, we good? Yeah, 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 we good? Okay, maybe we need to, like, shout something or something. I don't know. Uh, but uh, So, we're wrapping up this series called Make Wise Choices, um, and kind of let me set it up like this. Is have you ever felt like you were born to do great things? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yeah, yeah. So, so for me, you don't got to be ashamed of it. For me, this is my life. Every single day of my life, everything in the world, like my life is like I've got to do something great. Like everything I put my hand to since I was a kid. Um, for example, it started off with number one, um, baseball. Now, how many baseball fans we got in here? Baseball, baseball, baseball. How many of you ever signed up for Little League? Raise your hand. Okay, so for me, I play Little League, and here's the thing, like, even when I grabbed the bat, and I think we all do this, for me, I grabbed the bat, and look, I didn't just grab a bat, and I was like, look, I hope to hit a ball off of a tee, right? Like, I, I, I hope, like, I hope I hit it. Like, I would grab a bat, and I'd be like, dude, I am, I am a professional baseball player. You know what I mean? And I would, and I would yell out my favorite baseball player. Like for you, who is your favorite baseball player? On the count of three, I just want you to yell it out. Um, ready? One, two, three. Okay, all I heard was, okay, do it again, do it again, do it again. You got to be louder, okay? One, two, three. Okay, none of you guys, I didn't hear you. So for me, my favorite baseball, who I grew up saying I was, was this guy that I'm sure everyone has heard of him, um, would be um, either one, Mickey Tettleton. You guys, anyone hear him? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so basically, if you don't know who he was, he always would have a, ch a mouthful of stuff in his mouth and to be spitting. And so for me, whenever I was a kid, I'd grab sunflower seeds, jam them suckers in my mouth, and I'd be, <laughs> and I got... Pitch the ball. I'm going to hit it out of Tiger Stadium, right? And, and my dream was I'm going to hit a home run in Tiger Stadium. And then they ripped that place down, built Comerica Park, and I moved on to hockey, right? How many hockey fans we have here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit, a little better. So for me, and again, what happened when I was a kid? I grabbed a hockey stick, and I did not go, man, I really hope that I am average. I really hope that I just can skate. What would I do? I'd grab a hockey stick, and I'd say I was one of two players. I'd say one, Sergei Fedorov, or... Yeah, Steve Eisenman, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. See, you guys are growing up at a different time where you guys don't, you guys grab your the sticks and be like, I'm Jimmy Howard. And you're like, oh, the puck goes through. <laughs> and it just, because he's not very good. But um, um, anyway, so, but for me, we dreamed about that. And you'd think, you would think that as I got older, you'd realize that, look, Chris, um, greatness, doing great things with your life, you'd think I would grow up and grow out of it. But oh, no. Oh, no. As of recent, because of you guys, because of you, I've gotten into this little game called um, <clears throat> foosball, okay? Okay, because, no, 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 here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. Look, look, here's the thing. There's only so many times I can come to fuel and get my tail whipped by you guys. Like, I, and it's, so what happens, like, for, and I got to confess something. So one thing, too, is I don't think I've ever won against you guys, but I do cheat all the time. Um, just had to get my, uh, just get that off my chest. Like, I'll score one goal and kind of slide two or three little things over. Um, but what happens, just, just, uh, you got to watch me. So, um, so here's the thing. What happens, though, is I start to YouTube it. I start to watch it. Like, I, I'll be in my office, and I'll get bored um, of writing sermons. And I'll just come out there, and I'll start practicing in my shot, you know what I mean? How does, how does Troy get it so fast? You know, and, and I don't know how he does it, but for me, I got to be the best, you know? And, and like, so Megan, you know, Megan up here, she's always like, Chris, you got to let the fuel kids win. I'm like, oh no, oh no, you box me, I'm lighting you up. You want to play foosball? I want to crush you because that's just how I am. Like, I got to be the best. 
And I think we can all relate to that to a certain degree where people in here, look, look, we dream to do great things with our lives. Right, like there are guys in here, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. I talk about sports, that's, that is you. You grab a football and you're like, I'm at effort. <laughs> you know, interception. I just, I'm just kidding. Um, but, uh, but you know what I mean? Like there are people, maybe you have real dreams, right? Like dreams that matter. Some of you guys, maybe you want to travel over to Africa and do missions. Maybe you're going on a mission trip this summer. Maybe you're pumped about the Detroit mission trip. Um, maybe for you, you're looking at your life and you just want to be the greatest student ever, Right? And you will get a B, a B, and it will drive you insane. Where you're like, I've got to get an A. And you're like, beg your teacher, give me some extra credit. I got to get an A, you know. I mean, you're that person because you want great things for your life. And I think here's where we're at. This is where the whole series has been about. It's about impact, right? About doing something with your life. Like, why make wise choices, right? Because we were built to do great things for God. Like, I really do believe it with all my heart. But here's what's crazy, is I believe most of you guys, most of us, will never achieve the great things that God has placed in our heart. And I don't think it's because we don't want to. I don't think it's because um, there, there's a lack of ability. But I think the reason most of us aren't gonna play much more than just Little League t-ball or baseball is not because of the ability, but it's because of the people that we're doing life with. I really do believe that with all my heart. Where this is what I want you to start thinking about. We're going to talk about friendships today. I want you to start thinking about who are your top two, three, four, five friends. Think about them. Think about them. Maybe they're next to you. That'd be awesome. But think about who that is. Now, here's what I want you to understand is those people that you say are my best friends, the people that maybe you got your arms around or the people that you're talking to right now, which means stop it! Okay. <laughs> but look at, look at, the people that you would say, these are my best friends. Here's what I want you to realize. Those people directly influence your life and take you towards your dreams or they have the tendency to remove you from them. And here's what's crazy. And this is the big idea, what wise people get this concept. And that's where the big idea, the sticky symbol, everything I want you to understand today when it comes to friendships is that wise people choose people. And I want you to say that with me. Say, wise people, wise people. Choose, choose people. All right, one more time. Wise people, wise people. choose yes. people. Yes. Why am I yelling? Yeah, you guys answered. That was awesome. You guys answered. But here's the thing. Why do people choose people? And here's what's crazy is most of us, here's what's crazy. Think about your top friends. Here's the question. Is did you choose them to be in your life or did you just kind of drift towards them? Because here's what happens, starts happening at this age. As you go to school, right? Maybe, maybe you're homeschooled, but either way, it's the same difference where we have common interests, we have common hobbies, we have people that start to dress like us and look like us. And instead of choosing our friends, we just kind of drift towards them. And we know this is true. You kind of start seeing separate groups starting to form where you kind of have like the jocks hanging out with the jocks. You got the, you got the, uh, the girls that want to do makeup all the time and they're just always doing makeup and painting each other's nails, but they all kind of click together. Um, you know what I mean? And you get these pockets of people all over the place, right? Where I'm telling you, for us, we got to be careful that we don't just drift towards a group of people that accept us. But we need to choose wisely our friends that are going to take us closer to God and take us to where it is. Because here's, bring this into a spiritual world. Some of you guys feel like your spiritual life is an up-down battle. Where there's some days, like, we will come here and sing just like John did. And you'll be here, and it's just like, oh my gosh, you can feel God. Some days you go to school, and man, you just can't feel him. And your spiritual life looks like this up-down thing where it's like, I love God, oh my gosh, where is he? I love God, where is he? I love God, where is he? And it's like, bam, 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 up-down, up-down, up-down. And could it be the reason you go up-down so much? Maybe you're here and you go, man, the Christian life is just really hard. Could it be the reason it's so hard is because the people that are in your life aren't taking you towards him, but they're taking him away. Could it be the people you hang out with at school? You didn't choose your friends wisely. You didn't choose them because they make you a better person, but you just kind of drifted towards them because you play baseball with them. And that's where we've got to understand that wise people don't just drift towards people groups. 
but they choose their friends wisely. And so here's what I want to do is I just want to give us a couple principles about what it means to choose our friends wisely. Does that sound good? And so we're just going to kind of look at what, what are a couple different ways of going about this. And we're going to talk about a guy whose name is Paul. Now, how many of you guys have heard of Paul? Raise your hand, raise your hand. Yeah, so we talk about Paul all the time around here. Okay, and here's why. Because Paul made an impact on this world. Like, I believe Jesus, number one person that influenced the world more than anything, right? But next to Jesus, like, the reason we talk about Paul so much is because he was a church planner. He was a missionary. This guy was a wrecking ball where he would go and he would be beaten. He would be shipwrecked. Like, he would go plant churches in places that are so far away from God, it's not even funny. Like, you might go to your school and be like, man, my school is completely jacked up. That means Paul, you know what Paul would have done? Let's start a Bible study. And he would have planted right there, and it would just ripple effect. So much so where his churches went worldwide. We are where we are because of Paul. And then, just to add to his flavor, you want to know what else Paul did? Just a little bit of an impact. He, he just did a little bit of great things. We didn't just plant churches. They didn't just go worldwide. But he also wrote, think about this, he wrote 13 books of our Bible. Can't we agree? Like that, that is pretty much like the pinnacle, I would say. If, if there's great things, that probably is it. Like you wrote the Bible, you, you've made it, right? Well, understand, I don't think Paul would have made as big of an impact. I don't think he would have lived out his dreams had he not chosen who to do life with wisely. Well, I just want to draw you into a story in Acts chapter 15. And you don't got to turn there. It's going to come up on the screens. But I just want you to read this because Paul, before he wrote the Bible, he had a choice just like us who you're going to do life with, where he had dreams, he had ambitions, he had these moments where he's like, you know, I want to do great things with my life. And I'm telling you, if in the middle of his life, where you're at right now, if you don't choose wisely who to do life with, you could miss everything God's calling you to. Well, check this out. We're just going to pick it up where it says this. Sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. So basically what he's saying is like, hey, Bart, Let's go on a trip, and we're going to go back to the churches I planted, and we're going to encourage them, strengthen them, make sure they're not messing up, right? Right? And so that's what he's doing. He's like, let's go on a trip, and then look at this. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with them, but Paul did not think it was, say that word with me. Okay, one more time. Paul did not think it was what? Right, we're in wise choices. So Paul's looking at this thing, and Bar is like, hey, we want you to take this guy named Mark. And Paul's going, man, I don't think that's a wise choice to take a guy named Mark. And here's why. Because it says this, um, because Mark had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. So Paul and Mark had already been friends. They were already together. Where Paul started going one way and Mark was like, man, this is getting too hard. And he leaves him. So Paul is going, look, I'm not going to take a quitter with me. I'm not going to take a guy that already left me once. And so look what happens. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus, but Paul, say that word with me, did what? Chose, right? He chose Silas and left. Now don't miss this, huge thing was happening here. Paul is deciding who he's gonna go do life with, and he makes a wise choice, and he chooses to take Silas over Mark. And the first learning we have to understand if you want to do the things God's calling you to, you want to connect to God more, you want to do the great things, we've got to understand there are certain people that you need to choose to put in your life and other people you need to choose to get rid of in your life. And I think we understand that to a great degree. Like, for example, for example, if you got a friend in school, right, and all he does is disrespect the teacher, goes in the back and smokes drugs, and he just, and he, and he, and he just looks at things he shouldn't look at all day long, right? If you make him your best friend, you understand life's probably going to go bad for you. Can't we agree? Can't we agree? Like, we, we go, yeah, yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. And I'm not saying you disregard him out of your whole life. Like, I think we need to lead him to Jesus. But look, he shouldn't be your top five friends. So the million-dollar question is, okay, then who do we make our friends? Right? And I think there's two types of people that you need in your life. If you want to do the great things, there's two types of people where, number one, I think you need someone that you reach up to. Number one, I think we need friendships. Friendships that reach up. Meaning people that make you better in life. People that make you wiser and smarter and that will challenge you and take you closer to God. I think it's huge. Where for me, this is the number one thing that I do. You want to know for me, the thing that's helped me in life more than anything else is having a friend that I reach up to. 
And so for me, I don't know if you guys know this, but I have a mentor, and that means he's older than me, um, but he's better than me, and he reaches up to me. And so if you guys don't know who he is, um, I'm going to put a picture up on the screen of him, but um, his name is Greg. So how many of you guys know Greg Kahalen, one of our executive pastors around here? Um, yeah, and so I think we have a picture of him. Yeah, look at them. Them are two looking, good looking guys, ain't they? You know? But now that's good. Now here's what's crazy. Now you look at us, and that is a crystal clear picture of how different we are. Okay, like you guys can't tell right there, but he is first off like five foot, um, two and a half. <clears throat> um, anyway, so he's tiny. But secondly, is he is like professional in every way. Now, time out and think about this. Look at me. Okay, I am not professional. Like me and him walk into Tim Hortons together to get coffee in the morning. And look, the Tim Hortons people are like, oh, look at this is Chris's uh, correctional officer. Like he is, a, this is one apple that fell way off the tree. You know what I mean? Um, like because we just don't look like we belong together. But I'm telling you, one of the greatest relationships in my life is a guy that's older than me and I've put in my life, and don't miss this, is that if you want a relationship in your life that's gonna make you better, one of the best things you can do is find someone that's older than you, someone that you respect and thinks that, you know what, they love Jesus. I'm telling you, one of the best things you can do is choose them to be in your life. You gotta choose that. Because understand, these friendships don't come normal. Because again, again, me and Greg, we don't do the same things, right? Right, like, like we, we just don't hang out in the same places. We don't dress alike, we don't look alike. Like there's nothing very similar about it. And that's where I had to pursue him and I had to choose him. And one of the best things you could do for your life is to choose someone to place in your life that you reach up to and that takes you closer to Jesus, because again, this isn't just better for better's sake. Understand, do, do, why am I friends with Greg, right? Is it just because I want a five foot two friend that I could dunk on a basketball and feel better about myself and be like, boo yeah, how you like me now, you know? Like shoot it, bam, shoot it, bam, shoot it, bam. Like, is that it? No, but it's because he takes me closer to God. And I'm telling you, one of the best things you can do is get a friend in your life that's not a sixth grader, not a seventh grader, not an eighth grader, but someone that's older than you and loves God because that will make your life so much, so much easier. And I think the second thing is this, is I think you need friends that are going where you're going. Point number two is I think you need friendships, people in your life that are going where you're going, meaning people that believe like you, people that think like you. And this is what's gonna bring us back to Paul. Because remember, he was on this missionary journey, right, where he's taking off and he's actually going to do missions, Right? And he chose not to take a guy named Barnabas and a guy named Mark, right? And why is that? Because Mark deserted him, right? Well, check this out. Just reread this. This, this is big that we see this. It says, Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with them. But Paul did not think it was wise. Remember, there's our word. He's like, this isn't a good idea to take this guy named Mark. Because he had deserted them, Pamphylia had not continued with them in the work. Now, here's what's crazy about that is we tend to think about this story and go, man, well, Mark was probably a screw-up, right? Like, can't we agree? We were like, well, Paul, we understand we shouldn't be friends with bad people, and Mark, he was probably a bad guy. Well, understand, this was Mark, like, you have your Bible, right? You remember the first four books of the New Testament? You got Matthew, Mark, Mark. Think about that. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Like, we can agree, Mark, if he wrote a book of the Bible, he was probably a pretty awesome guy, right? But Paul decided... I'm not gonna take one of the guys of the Bible. I'm gonna take a guy like Silas, and why is that? Because Paul was a one-man wrecking crew, like I told you. Like, he didn't do mission trips like we do. Like, we're gonna go to Detroit, right? And it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be awesome, but here's what we do. We say, here's where we're gonna stay. We tell your parents, we sign permission slips, we make sure you're gonna be fed, we tell you where you're gonna sleep, you're gonna have a nice pillow, it's gonna be awesome, and it's gonna be great. Paul would grab a partner and be like, hey, we're going to go on a journey. And they would go, okay, where are we going? I don't know. How long are we going to be going? I don't know. Are we ever going to eat? I have no idea. Do you want me to pack a bag? Nope. Let's go. Boom. And they would just go. Right? Like Paul was a crazy guy that would just take off on journeys, trusting God to take care of him. And that's why Mark couldn't take it. And so look at this. Look at this. If Paul would have chose Mark instead of Silas, he would have never got to see the greatness of God in his life. Where if you go over to the next chapter, you just turn your page and continue with Paul's story, 
understand, he lived a life, and it was hard to live out his dreams. Where for you guys, understand, if you want great things to come of your life, it's going to be hard. You're going to need someone to encourage you. You're going to need someone to pick you up. You're going to need someone to say, look, it's going to be okay. Even Paul needed that. We're literally, if you track through his story, so they leave to go on this mission trip, right? Him and this guy named Silas. And, and they start tracking and they start pumping up the church and they start building the church and they start to encourage the church. And then there's this story continues. If you remember back to um, our winter retreat, where the, the, there was a demon-possessed girl that all of a sudden started following Paul. Think about that. These demon-possessed girls started following Paul and Silas, and the Bible tells us that day after day, she was yelling his name. So imagine, play that out like, a, like, like something like a movie where Paul and Silas are walking along, and, hey man, how you doing? And this crazy lady's behind him going, Paul! Paul! Paul, 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 every day after day after day, like like Tuesday, Paul, Wednesday, Paul, Thursday, Paul, 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 where Paul gets so mad, he's like, woman, wham, cast the demon right out of her. Okay, he might have not hit her, I probably made that up, but in a day, he cast the demon out of her. Think about that. Like if you were Silas, you'd be like, oh dang, it's on, it's on, it's on, back up, back up, back up, you know, I'm a Paul, I'm a Paul. Where the the whole town gets so mad. Don't miss this. They get mad because Paul cast a demon out of a girl, throw him in prison. And all of a sudden you're going, yeah, darn right. <laughs> but you know what I mean? And you, now imagine, imagine. All this happened because Paul got upset. Imagine. Now just think about this. They're sitting in jail probably with their heads down, thinking, are we ever going to get out of this? Are we ever going to see set free? Am I ever going to see uh, my family again, right? Like, you can imagine, like, in, have you ever seen the movies where, like, there's this moment where, like, one guy needs to apologize to another guy, and it's just, like, you start playing that mood music behind it, and it's just, like, I'm sorry. You guys know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? I imagine that's probably the scene where Paul's sitting there, Silas is sitting there, and he's, bro, I, I, I lost my cool. I shouldn't, have, I, I shouldn't have cast the demon out, dude. I am so sorry. Now imagine, imagine, just check this out. Imagine if they would have taken Mark. Paul says, I'm sorry. Mark probably would have put his head down and been like, I want my mama. I quit. I'm going home. We get out of here. I'm going home, Paul. Right? Because Mark quit on Paul already. But look, Paul makes a wise choice. Paul chooses Silas where they're in this moment where Paul's saying sorry and Silas is going, Paul, it's going to be okay. Where Paul is looking at this thing going, man, hey, I'm going to need some help. Look, I'm kind of feeling down. And Paul, my Silas is going, look, we're going to be okay. We're going to be out of here. It's going to be fine. We're so much so where the, if you go over to chapter 16, it says this, that about midnight. Remember midnight worship? You remember what happened? At about midnight, it says Paul and who? Say it. Yes. Paul and who? Yes. Paul and who? Yes. Right, because Silas and Paul were partners. They were together, heart and soul, and Paul and Silas weren't getting upset at each other. They weren't fighting. They weren't crying about their situation, but they were like, we got this. God's got this. And they started to sing, sing, and sing hymnals, and then all of a sudden the Bible says, boom, an earthquake busts loose. Could you imagine that? You'd be like, Silas, what'd you do? I don't know. I don't know, Paul. I keep singing. Keep singing. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's louder, louder, louder. Oh, God. Oh, God. Wah! You know, and then boom, the chains fall off and all the prison doors fly open. Could you imagine that? And everyone's chains came loose. Now, here's what's crazy. Don't miss the truth in this, guys. We all go, I would love to sing, oh, God, and have this whole place go crazy. Right? Listen to me. Had Paul not chosen someone that was going to connect him to God, had Paul not chosen someone that was willing to go where he was going through thick and thin and trust in God and say, you know what, my life's going to be about God, whether my school friends want to believe that way, whether my parents want to feel that way. Look, we're going to go partner together. We're not going to give up when life gets hard. I'm telling you, had he picked the wrong person, 
he would have never been able to see the greatness of God in his life. And that's why for us, listen to me, make wise choices. Here's what I'm begging you guys to do. Begging you guys to make wise choices and choose your friends wisely. Because I'm telling you, the old saying is true. You show me your friends, I'll show you your future. And I'm telling you what, your dreams, where God wants you to do with your life, is way too precious to waste it because you want to earn the cool kids' respect in school. Because you want to earn her attention. Because all the boys like her. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Choose your friends wisely. Don't go after the popular kids. Go after the kids that take you closer to Jesus. Because wise people choose people, right? Say it one more time with me. Wise people choose people, right? And man, we got to make wise choices with our friends. And so here's what's going to happen. I want to pray over you guys, and then we're going to dismiss them to life groups. If you don't know what a life group is, we kind of give you a highlight of what it is. Is it's a place where we try to cultivate these types of friendships where you connect and you get to talk to God, about God to each other. Okay, and so when I say amen, what's going to happen is that the sixth graders always meet up here, the seventh graders underneath that exit sign, the eighth graders over on my left, your right. Um, and here's what's going to happen. We're going to kind of just talk and connect about what kind of friends we have in our life and where God's taking us inside of all that. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's pray, and then we're going to be dismissed sixth, seventh, and eighth. We get that? So let's pray. Um, dear Jesus, God, thank you so much. Uh, for my friends. God, you've put unbelievable people in my life. I'm um, someone I love, love dearly, just Megan, Josh, Quinn, people like that, God, that you have just lit me up with. Um, and God, I pray for these students, God, as we, we think about our friends, our top five, the people that we put our arms around here or that we talk to or that we um, play video games with or play sports with, God. God, let us really look at them relationships and say, God, dudes, well, I really want to do life with them. God, put dreams in our hearts that matter. And put people in our life. And God, let us be unbelievably wise where we wise people understand that we choose people. God, we got to get that. God, let us not drift towards people that act like us, think like us, or just dress like us. God, let us choose our friends wisely. In your name we pray. God, amen. Amen.